Okay, so we're just going to do a single defense because I'm getting my, my keister handed to me in such a grand way that I'm starting to lose confidence. Uh, let's see. Broadhead bolts. Broadhead bolts. I think I'm going to stay away from the uh, the haunted houses this run. I think they're nice, but I don't think they're actually that good. I think I'd be better off going for just banditry and nothing more. Uh, mana bank. Well, that's a good sign right off the bat. Because, yeah, part of it is I also need to know if there's any major changes that I need to be aware of in the later runs. Okay, banditry. Perfect. Why no AoE towers? I'm trying to do dual tower challenges. Uh, because there's a couple of achievements for... Uh, for them that I haven't cleared yet. Namely, I need to do one for encampments. I got to do one for particle cannons. I got to do one for radars. I've got to do one with no ballista towers, which is... I'm not actually sure how doable that is. It's probably doable, but I imagine it's really rough right now. Okay, well, I can go mana bolts, because we've already got the mana bank. It's going to be a little pricey, though, but eh, we'll get there. Sure feels like the game goes from 0 to 100 in terms of losses. There, it's the same thing with Bloons and a couple other tower defense games. That it's, uh, many tower defenses are not games of just pure numbers, but they are very much carefully balanced around the idea of hard counters to certain, certain enemy spawns that happen at, at various points in the game. And that if you're not prepped for those, then you're kind of in a, in a well, you're going to have a bad time. Am I missing any many meta upgrades? Nope. Not yet. It's mainly just that uh, Nerf Stick hit things hard. And I'm just kind of on the... Uh, let's see. Still trying to change around that. Hey, thank you, 177 Mike, for the 39-month reset. Thank you. Do I want to get this here? So I wanted to go back to the topic from the previous run where I was talking about uh, roguelikes that get a little too nerf happy and, and like focus on the hard bits a little too much. The one immediate problem with that kind of thing is that if you go too hard on just sheer difficulty, uh, you end up losing a lot of potential player base. Like right now, there's kind of part of me that says like, maybe I should just like shelve this after maybe one or two more failures because uh, it's not an... It's not in a state that I want to play the game currently. Um, and maybe this is just me giving up a little early, which is probably partly the case. But that it's not uncommon um, for like a game to come up with a patch that makes everything much, much harder. And then I just like peace out on it because it's not fun anymore. Um, and then I just never go back to like check again, uh, check again to see if it, it gets into a, like a better state. Um, and I was going to compare that specifically to Binding of Isaac. That I really liked Binding of Isaac when it was like in its rebirth state. And maybe like... No, it was pretty much rebirth. Rebirth was perfect. Um, but maybe a little too easy for the hardcore people. And then they kept adding like harder and harder things with hyper armor and all sorts of nonsense. Uh, I actually want to grab scholarships first. Even if it's completely useless to me at the moment. And that... You know, the harder and harder Binding of Isaac got, the less interested I was in playing more Binding of Isaac to the point where, like, I just have minimal interest in going back. Uh, kind of same thing with, oh, what's a good example? I like World of Warcraft was one of them where, you know, it used to be just kind of a fun light game that you play. Yeah, a little grindy, but then they kept just adding more and more and expecting more and more from you. And it's just like, I'm done with this. I don't want to do this anymore. It's another one. I mean, Dead Cells was kind of there with the uh, the cell levels. I beat like the first two cell levels and it's like, hey, by the way, you don't get to see the uh, the final final boss until like cell level three or something like that. And I'm just like, I mean, I guess it's fine, but I just don't have the will to go back to that one. And I realize like the really hardcore players are going to just love it regardless. So it doesn't matter that much. Um, and so for people that were wanting more of a challenge out of this, uh, I think this is actually going to be probably a good patch for them. Because I certainly feel like, uh, I had hit a good rhythm previously, 
And now I don't know what I'm doing, because everything's wrong. Actually, the MMO comparison is not a bad way of putting it. Because I definitely remember, like, over the course of the years, there would always be, like, that one patch that changed the class forever. And then you really would actually lose quite a lot of players from, uh, from whatever that, like, class was. And for, you know, whatever the nerf was, you know, it's like, ah, they nerfed backstabs. And it's like, well, did they need nerfing? Yeah, but, and then... Even then, no matter how hard you logic those players of like, yeah, this needed to have changed, they don't come back. Kind of like if I started playing visual novels for a week. Kind of the idea of like, well, would some of you guys never come back? The answer is, yeah, maybe. Find somebody else that's playing more Rogue Tower and not visual novels. Eh, maybe the novelty of it would keep people around, but you never know. I should probably have this guy on most armor, now I'm thinking about it. Okay, extra range is good, extra damage to health is actually really good. I'd stick around, but only for Doki Doki Literature Club. You'd be missing out, there's a couple other really good visual novels out there. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. His ballistas gain range is good, but let's go for the broadhead bolts, especially now. Let's see where this one goes. You never know, playing Dream Daddy could put you in the top 1% of Twitch. And that'd be funny as shit. Just like randomly blow up because of a couple years old uh, dating sim visual novel. Technically, Phoenix Wright is a visual novel. Yeah, exactly. I, I would say Phoenix Wright and Pyre are some of the absolute best visual novels I've ever, ever played, and they are very much not the kind of visual novels that you normally think of. Uh, let's see, do we want to do more? Yeah. Probably have a couple of these start focusing on fastest. I am going the wrong direction. Let's see, banditry too. Yeah, we need the money. The extra crit chance would go a ways though, but being able to put more towers down goes further. What is, what is this level design? It's confusing. Let's probably have these focus the most armor. At this range, we want to just kind of punch things down. Personally, I love it for visual novels, given that they're one of, uh, one of my favorite aspects of your channel is variety and learning new games. Yeah, my problem is a lot of visual novels are a little long and wreck my voice. Like we did uh, Phoenix Wright, oh, like, uh, I guess it was a month ago, because we did it for New Year's and then Shell's birthday, and my voice has still felt kind of raw, because I don't get a whole lot of time to recover. There we go. I think the word design is a bit generous for a randomly generated path. It's true. I do really hope they give us, like, loop hero style cards. I realize that would take a while to implement and might not be worth it, but it would be so neat if you could actually, like, manually control what tiles you put down and where. Because that would get really satisfying. Let's see. I think we're fine. It's a very long run up here, which actually works really well. We do have one secondary entry point, but it's fine because these guys get cleared out before these guys even hit this section. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Let's go for bleed them dry. And keep expanding this a little bit further just because this is probably going to be a radar run. Could be particle cannon, either particle cannon or radar, one or the other. See, is Dark Cloud going to return, or is it too much of a time sink? So, 
Uh, every Friday, I put out a poll on my Twitch subs and supporter uh, channel on Discord for like what I should focus on. And admittedly, I'm breaking a little bit to play some uh, Rogue Tower, but it's kind of a guideline on what people want to watch. But the answer is very much uh, Dark Cloud got two votes as opposed to like 12, 13 or some other things, which really just means nobody's voting uh, com compared to the amount of people that generally watch me. But I still use it as kind of a vague indicator for stuff. And it has not won a poll in a very long time. The thing I've learned the most is people like watching something new. People don't actually like watching things to the end. With some exceptions. Um, and that often if I am if I present people with a, uh, a poll, a poll of like, hey, what do you want? It's usually f most familiar option, new option, uh, least... Or, no. Most familiar option that is new, followed by just new option, followed by, like, really, uh, maybe finishing? I don't know. There's a better way of explaining this than I'm currently doing, and I'm doing it a bit of a d disservice. But, so, the the downside oftentimes uh, with content creation and some other stuff is that there's this, this constant push to out with the old, in with the new, and keep that churn up for a while. Uh... And so I'm, I feel like I'm in a bit of uh, a loop for that, especially because I've explained this a couple of times, uh, probably more often than not recently, uh, but YouTube really, really hates um, series at the moment, especially for like, um, like Let's Play series. So I can put out like just tons of Rogue Tower on YouTube and it turns out fine. Uh, because ultimately the videos are non-sequential and you can just watch them. Whereas for like more of a traditional Let's Play format, uh, you really have to watch episodes 1 through 20 in sequence and you're more than likely to have people drop off as you go along. And so the, uh, the issue that I've been struggling with here is that... Uh, you know, I can do the next episode on Dark Cloud and it'll get like 2,000 views or I can do some new and interesting game that people have never heard of or haven't seen in a while and it'll get like 20,000 views and so when you sit down and do the internet mercenary math you're like oh yeah very clearly pick that one ah uh, do I want to go eviscerate considering everything's going to be bleeding to begin with or do we want to pick the radars because this is very much a radar map Or I could go Particle Cannon. Because Particle Cannon ain't bad. Radar is great, but I need more. I Yeah, let's go Radar. Because this is very much a primo radar map. We don't want to put it there, though. I think we want to put it here, right smack dab in the center, where they can hit everything, and we're going to have this one focus on most health. And just health. And how do we, how the hell do we expand this? Uh, do I even expand this one? I don't think so. I might leave that here. Let's just expand that and go from here. So what does the radar do? It summons a biplane that shoots things. It's pretty good. It does a ton of damage. But it has this like really stupid thing where it, uh, it circles around enemies. And so they don't, they're not always firing because they will often go like really long distances to kind of loop around before hitting the next thing. Uh, let's see. As someone who loves traditional Let's Plays, it hurts to see so many YouTubers that I enjoy just die off. It's rough. And so from my perspective, I'm kind of lucky that I can just do a format change. Uh, radars gain extra range, which actually might be a bad thing. We will see. Damaged armor. Sure, why not? Uh, pa, 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 pa. Anyway, uh, and like the thing is, you can make it work with a really intensely passionate fan base. But the other problem that I'm struggling with a little bit is that I don't actually like finishing games. Um, like I try, but usually what I do is I go, I go really hard on a game, get really into it. Oh, we no, we don't actually want that. Broadhead bolts level three, sure. Uh, I get really into a game, play a crazy amount of it, and then get bored. 
And oftentimes that is very much based on... Uh, it's very much based on the idea of games have kind of a novelty threshold where it's fun and, you know, it's kind of neat to explore and learn the ins and outs. But the moment the game actually requires me to put any amount of extra time or effort in, that's usually the point where I bounce off. Uh, one, because the aforementioned, like, YouTube issues of just like, hey, don't actually, uh, don't actually put effort into finishing anything because views and engagement drop off really, really hard. Um... But, like, speaking of Dark Cloud, I'm, what, at the halfway point of the game, give or take? And the levels are getting longer. The enemies aren't that much harder, necessarily, but that's just because I'm cheating. <laughs> because of a glitch. But the ultimate factor is that I'm doing the same thing over and over again for however long it takes for me to finish the game. Now, obviously, I could still put the time in, and I probably want to. But I've been finding I'm having more fun almost kind of recording these games off. Uh, ooh, do you want to go Flaming Bolts? It's tempting. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get some fire up in here. I'm having more fun almost recording these things on my own uh, for the idea of, like, potentially doing a review. Let's just focus these probably on armor for the time being. Because armor is going to be more of an issue for the first 35 levels, and then we'll want to switch over to shield. Let's see. But so, yeah, I've been playing Death Stranding on my own, which is a game that, like, would have been really fun to do a Let's Play on. Uh, oddly enough, it would have been a really good podcast Let's Play. You know, I'm just driving point A to point B. And then every once in a while, the game goes really hard, and then I actually care about it and, and you know, talk more about the plot, and then we go back to just talking about stuff on the road. Works well enough for a stream, but the problem is I've put easily... I'd have to check how many hours I put into it uh, over the last couple hours. But so the immediate problem is that... Uh, let's see. There we go. Do I want to do the bonus damage to shields? Do I want to do the... Do I want to do that on the tracer... On the uh, planes, though? Let's do that. Let's see. But so, the problem with me doing that is like a, a regular Let's Play. If I wanted to play Death Stranding. One, you have to compete with the idea of not everybody's going to want to watch Death Stranding. Uh, so even though, though it might be like a great game, there's going to be some people passionate about it. Chances are... Um, let's see, would they be better against slower targets? I don't know, actually. No, not really. Because they actually had some trouble hitting this guy. Which is a bit of a bit of a problem. It's not a huge one, but still. Uh but so first off, when like doing a let's play, you have to you have to consider like, is everybody gonna want wanna watch this to the end? And um you don't really know until a couple of days have passed since you, you did the video on it. So I might put out like a first episode and it gets like 30, 40, 40,000 views, and I'm like, oh man, this is going to be like a really passionate, uh, you know, people are really going to care about watching this Let's Play. And then it drops off to like 2,000 because that initial 40,000 views is very much just people curious about whether or not the game is good. Uh, more damaged armor, quantity, eh, let's go for the grit at this point. Now yeah, I'm not going for graves here. I should probably work on my radars. Cool. I should probably also get some more ballistas down, because at some point this is going to get bad. Uh, let's see. Most shield, most health. Yeah, let's just start getting some ballistas down. And focus on making them not terrible. Because at some point we're going to get too many things, and my, my planes are not going to be able to do enough damage. Uh, the other thing I might want to consider is actually just a bunch of ballist or ballistas kind of here and there focused on slowing things down. Yeah, let's do that. Especially this hill right here. This is a perfect hill for enemies to die on. Uh, let's see. 
Bah, blisters do more damage to armor. Biplanes do damage to health. Ideally, I want the biplanes to be able to make things bleed too. Because they're, they're the ones that are doing the most amount of damage here. Okay. I'm trying to explain why Let's Plays are rough. And I probably should just do a, a video essay on this with the actual graphs and numbers. Um, but so you put out your first episode, it gets X number of views. And then every, every episode, therefore, like after that, drops off by a significant chunk. It's usually about 50% up until you hit a floor. So 50,000 down to 25,000, down to 10,000, 12,000, give or take, all the way down to about 3,000 views per video. And then it's just stuck there until you're done. And so if it's like a 200 hour game, that's like 200 hours of barely any any views because everybody's just only watching the first bit. And that shit sucks. It's hard to work with and, you know, it very much like implies like, hey, this formula no longer works. It works well enough on a stream if you can uh, get people to stick around for that. But from a... Um, from a YouTube perspective, which, you know, I very much am based around, uh, I have to kind of obey that system. And it would be really nice if the algorithm was a little bit more flexible about what people want and what people are looking for. But oftentimes, it isn't, and it very much puts puts you kind of in this bad position of just like, hey, you, you displeased the algorithm with this latest video of yours. Change it. It's like, what? No. Uh, and then you can do nothing. Streams have more audience engagement, so it seems easier to people to keep people around if, if they're less interested in the game than they might normally be. It's weird, though. It, you'd think that, but oftentimes I actually have trouble getting people to show up for that second round or for anything plot-related. Uh, so specifically, Shell and I were playing Skyward Sword recently, and I enjoyed it, but there was definitely kind of that feeling of like, Whenever I'd switch over to it, I'd lose half of my viewership. And so, when the numbers are that fickle, it's almost even tougher to work around. Grab these. What is this? Just most health? I don't really know what to focus these th things on apart from that. Let's just keep going until this splits. Because we want a really long path to spawn bosses off of. And this isn't always true, and I, th I think maybe part of it is just kind of how people react to specifically me. And maybe even I'm less fun, because I, I definitely notice I play around the most at the beginning of a game. Uh, usually messing around with ad-libbing or being kind of snarky. And then I lose that as I get kind of into the rhythm of it. How do we want to do this? probably have a bunch of these focused on fastest because we, we want anything that gets through here to just be completely shredded. Okay, how are these doing? There we go. Here, there we go. Let's see, biplanes do burn damage. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to have the cool... Uh, shot trails that it does for almost everything else. Oh, here, here it was. There we go. Alright, keep expanding it until the splits. Perfect! With you, YouTube algorithm has been treating Let's Plays has legitimately affected me in a way that uh, affected the way I see games because I, I used to be able to extend my experience with a game for multiple additional hours by seeing the experience of others, but now a lot of game games I enjoy don't have that many people playing it. It just feels like my experience of that game would be... Uh, ooh. Of what that game would be would, was cut off and cut off early in a weird way. Sorry, I'm stumbling over my tongue and I have been for the last couple of days. I don't know, lost it. So I fully agree with you because I used to watch how. What's a good example? There weren't many. There were a couple of roguelikes that I would would watch kind of heavily. Um, but I, I know that's the case, especially for, I mean, roguelikes, yes, but I'm thinking like Outer Wilds. A lot of people will finish watching, uh, playing Outer Wilds and then they'll want to go live vicariously through somebody else's experience of that game to kind of share the experience. 
Uh, so we've got monster gas. So we've already got the status effects that we need. Let's go for a slow but sure so my planes can slow things down as well. Uh, let's just focus you on shields. And keep expanding until that splits. Look at all these graves. Though I'm not actually sure how many of them are reachable, all things considered. Um, <laughs> it is fun watching all my planes just kind of going. And mulching. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. But so, for Outer Wilds, there's very much that kind of feeling of com camaraderie. Where... You watch somebody play it, uh, you, you finish playing it, and then you watch somebody else play it to see what their reaction is going to be, and it's slightly different, and it's really fun. Um, well, I mean, here's a here's a decent example, though, of kind of the counterpoint. And maybe it's something that I struggle with. Yesterday, I put out a video on Dying Light 2 uh, that is currently sitting at only 4,000 views. That's a game that I, I seriously would have considered maybe doing a Let's Play on just because I'd played the the first Dying Light game, and it was actually a rather popular series on my channel. Uh, but I'm fighting with two things with it. One is that uh, people probably don't want to watch it. Ballistics gain crit chance or additional salt. Let's go for this slow. The advanced ballistics for the crit chance would be nice. Oh, probably should have actually not done that because now Zombie Oogie is spawning much sooner, but I don't think it matters. Um, uh, but so I really liked... Uh, I really liked the first Dying Light. I would have done a second series on it if people were interested. Admittedly, my experience with it was a little rougher, so my uh, my commentary is a little bit like, man, they changed some things in a way that I don't like, but that's fine. Uh, but I don't want to watch it because I don't want to spoil myself. I did see the video pop up, though. And so uh, the issue with that is, while I totally understand with that, the way it tells me is that if I, if I were to go all in on this game... Uh, do we want to just go for the slow but sure? Yeah, let's go for the tick damage and then file consumption. I mean, there's also eviscerate, but this is fine. Let's see. But so, because not everybody want, wants to watch the Let's Play at the start because they want to avoid spoilers, uh, it puts me in that awkward position of not... Uh, not wanting to go for a series on that game because one, I know the videos are going to drop off, and two, by the time people are willing to watch me again, most likely, uh, there there will be some new game to kind of pull people in instead. A boss died fast. My planes did not like him because he had a lot of HP, so they focus fired him to hack and back again. Um, but so, I guess the point I'm trying to make here is that there's there's this like very pervasive problem with. Uh, how Let's Plays are perceived and consumed on multiple platforms, and I wish there was an easier way to put them out in a way that made them easier to find in the future and uh, actually encourage people to stick around for the sum total of it. Um, and I don't feel like YouTube or Twitch are good platforms for either. Uh, and that the format very easily just kind of pushes people away and... It doesn't really bring them back ever. Uh, what I would love to see is like an actual website pop up that is kind of a competitor to Twitch and YouTube that is very much like, hey, uh, stream your game and then go back through the footage, cut it up into separate chapters based on like what happens. Um, you know, here's a bunch of extra features. And all you do is like you look at Wanderbots and uh, all towers gain 5% crit. Make, the, make them suffer would be kind of nice, but I don't care that much. Um, but, you know, so you, you'd specifically look at my channel and it would have, you know, Let's Plays for Skyward Sword, for... Uh, that's a good example. Outer Wilds. And you just see on my page, instead of video, 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 you would just see all of my collected Let's Plays. Uh, kind of Netflix style plus like the most recent episodes of the most currently related ones. I watched the first episode, but I doubt I've watched much more since I usually watch gameplay to see if so it's something I'm interested in playing myself. Yeah, and that's that's perfectly fine. And in fact, uh, that's part of the reason why I've kind of changed my my business model? Question mark. I mean, clearly I'm playing tons of Rogue Tower, so that is there are games that are the exception. Um, but that it is it is totally fine to use YouTubers and streamers and whatnot as a as a guide for like is this game worth buying? Let's 
let's see an unfiltered impression of the game and whether or not it's good and then move on because you know if you if it looks good then you want to play it and if it doesn't look good then you wouldn't want to watch a let's play anyway it's very rare to find a game that actually hits the venn diagram of you want to play it and then you want to watch somebody else play it it's pretty much like undertale uh let's see haunted house hollow point bleed them dry i don't know i guess let's go hollow point the hell why is this so long that's nah, fine but kind of like how Splattercat uploads his content. Yeah. I <laughs> Years ago, when he had made the Switch, I thought he was crazy. I was like, this seems like a uh, huge risk to be switching your channel away from what I perceived as a, uh, a very safe system. Uh, let's see. But, you know, it seemed like his channel was doing really, really well, and he was getting decent chunks of views. You know, why switch away from the Let's Play format? And, like, the dude had a hell of a dip for a while. Um, let's see. But then, now at this point, like, he's really established himself as kind of a indie gem, gem miner. And it actually works really well for him, because... He kind of can do whatever he wants, and I, I, I'd have to talk to him about, like, his actual perceptions of things before I put words in his mouth about anything, but it very much feels like he's kind of found this this ni nice equilibrium where he finds the really cool games and puts them in front of people, but he doesn't stick around in such a way that it needs, uh, it becomes the backbone of anything. And I think it might also be... There's kind of a feeling of a YouTuber midlife crisis, and this happens not infrequently. Where the formula that... There's Creeping Cough. The formula that made a YouTuber big might not necessarily uh, be viable for long term. Uh, or maybe not viable, but sustainable. So from my perspective, doing just constant Let's Plays you know, episode one to finale. Uh, that sort of thing actually got to be kind of a drain just because there's very much this feeling of like, you have to just chain yourself to the chair and if you miss a day, the views drop. Uh, if things get boring, the views drop. If the game takes a bad turn, the views drop. And I find myself uh, kind of in this bad position of, or I used to find myself in this bad position of, I didn't know if a game was going to be good or not. Uh, so recently I played a game called... Um, ba, 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 ba. Nobody Saves the World. Fantastic game, really enjoyed it. But I couldn't see myself finishing it. I tried, I actually did like two or three more, more episodes to see if I really wanted to stick it out and play some more. And the answer was, it was a neat game, but I knew I was going to get bored by hour 10. And then I... I like mentally would be unable to um, to go back to it and put some more time in. Even if, you know, the demand or the interest was there. Let's get these up to 13. Because if we can get that upgrade for the extra 2%, it'll give me a little bit more. Um, let's see, a radar run. It's a good time to tune in. Yeah, it's actually a decent one. I've been getting wrecked. How high do you usually go in university? Uh, 15 to 25, depends. And that might be a little high. Ooh, expunge. There we go. Let's grab this. I want to loop it back. Ooh. Another secret university spot. And no. Just three. And we've already got shield damage up to plus four, which is better than the last couple runs. Let's see. I could go higher, but ultimately only need so many points. Let's see. One of the big strengths in this run is so far I have yet to feel the need to upgrade any of my any of my towers, which is actually saving me a tremendous amount of money. Because all of these are leveling themselves up, and their entire core focus is just slowing things down. And then these suckers are just constantly shooting, so they're getting a decent number of levels just by existing. I'll probably want to level them up more. Global damage buffs are rare, so they're so good. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the one reason why they're not as good to focus purely on the university is these just add to the multiplier, so you want to get a little bit more. Uh, well, you want to get 
actual upgrades on your planes. Or whatever your towers are. Otherwise, it's not going to be as good. I think these planes all have the same priority and it's messing them up a little bit. I might want to mix things around. Oh, because this is most health. Let's do most health and slowest. Most shield and fastest. Because, yeah, if I have a contingent like this and they're all focusing the same thing, it's not actually spreading the damage around, which is kind of bad. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Hollow point or slow cooker? Slow cooker. Okay. The most health and least shield. Shield, because yeah, I just wanna, I just wanna mix these up a little bit so it's not the same targeting preferences. Let's see, progress. Oh, she shield most health and fastest. There we go. That splits them up a little bit more, because I really do not want a contingent of six planes just doing whatever. I kind of wish instead of progress there was also a just random one. You know, just pick a random target or an untargeted target. Because, yeah, if you notice, these three planes are currently picking the same targets and generally will continue to stick together. Eh, they're splitting a bit. But you don't want that a little bit because their damage is so good that having them focus fire the same target is kind of rough. And they're mostly doing it. I don't think it'll be that big of a problem. But I could see it becoming terribly bad in certain areas. Okay. Uh, let's do slowest. Most health and least armor. There we go. Things need upgrades that increase their turning time. Oh, absolutely. I would love to see that kind of flexibility for them. Grab the university here and get it up to plus 13. For a second, I thought there was a plus 55 SD, and I'm like, what happened? How'd that come about? The answer is it didn't. I'm a little disappointed, but I'm not overwhelmingly so. Okay. All blisters gain 10% chance to crit. I mean, it's better than anything else I can grab. Er, fastest. Alright. Anything else we do? No. Onwards. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of ignore this. I'm leaving it just long, largely just so that when bosses spawn, or really I just want to have a couple of different... Ooh, this looks a bit dicier than I want it to be. I could potentially get a radar out here but I think it's just better that I have really strong ballistas in this area. And they're kind of just okay. Maybe I expand this by like a tile or two. There we go. These guys actually got by. Actually, seen someone get it up to plus 100 da global damage. Oof. Okay. It's here. <laughs> New here, but this bot seems incredible. The audio feedback sounds like a real person. <laughs> I, uh, so I've got some close friends on like other YouTubers that legitimately thought I was a bot when I first started to interact with them and uh, it took them a little bit to realize that no, that was just branding. When I uh, when I originally envisioned this channel, I didn't think this was going to be a problem, uh, but apparently it is. I don't know. I It amuses me to no end, personally.
the one reason why the universities are so good specifically on radars is because they've got a really high starting base damage, but upgrading them gets kind of expensive. So it's kind of worth it to go for the universities for radars. It's not as worth it for, oh gosh, maybe mortars? Maybe mortars. Eh, no, no, it's still worth it on mortars. It's just there's less of a need to specifically upgrade these because it only does so much. I don't know. Let's go with the fastest creature with the most health and most progress. Hey, Wander. Loved your ancient legacy of Azul video. Yeah. I'm thinking of doing a couple runs of that after this just to see if I can get a bit deeper. Because that game has some mild issues with uh, being a little too derivative of... Uh, risk of rain, but the rest of it is super solid. But also it's like a five buck game, so I don't know. Hard to care. I'm very much in that kind of men mentality this year. It's just like, is the game dirt cheap? Then it's forgiven. Mostly. Okay, let's just... I don't know. Kind of just wait here. We should probably just find some of these that focus on armor and actually upgrade them. Or maybe I just ignore it. Ignore the problem, wait, it f wait for it to go away. Eviscerate. No, we should probably upgrade these. Now that I'm thinking, well, there goes all my money. Holy shit. That is rough. Yeah, maybe never mind. Let's just, uh, let's just let universities handle it. Because, yeah, up, upgrading those planes to get the crit damage is just not going to be worth it. I'd love to. Oh, 20 plus level percent crit. Wait, did the math on that change? Is it different now? Oh, 20 base crit from all of my upgrades. That makes more sense. Oh, but that's only for this one. It's only 10 plus level for this. Yeah, there we go. It's brain. I forgot I got the uh, the Blissa crit perk after all. Okay, these are good. Yeah, decently tough. These guys are rounding the corner a little bit fast for me, though. They're not living, but they're not dying fast enough. There's one thing I could potentially do is just upgrade this area. Or just fill it with even more ballistas and just get that much more aggressive. Uh, let's probably have this one be on most health. Yeah, this will be spooky once the mobile portals spawn. Yeah, that's my big worry. That you really are fine up until that happens, and then you're not fine. Then nothing is fine. Okay, they're good. Ballistas do bleed damage, poison damage, shield from attacks. Yeah, vile consumption too, I guess. Because I don't need more status effects. We do fine? I guess a little bit... Oh, wait. No, 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 no. We have expunged, don't we? I wish I could actually see which perks I currently have. But I don't. And I can't. Let's see. Most armor. I'm just gonna beef this one the hell out. Cause I don't I don't wanna risk chipping through that armor. The missiles aren't too bad, but the rest of it is tough. The real final boss is way 40 and not brain. Oh yeah. Yeah, honestly the bosses in this game 
uh, because of how targeting priorities go, the bosses usually just get melted. They might get better, but uh, I'm not betting on them. Okay, your most armor as well. He's going to blow a ton of money on making one of these ballistas really good at chunking armor off. And you're going to be most shield. Let's see, most armor. No, it should just be most armor now I'm thinking about it. Yeah, wave 45 boss got all stats doubled if I remember correctly. I don't know. He just died like a chump. So he might be fine. Let's see, was this a boss wave? Yeah, the... <laughs> There's the... This is the boss wave. Ooh, biplanes get 10% crit chance? That's gonna go a long way. Okay, damage to shields. And biplanes do more burn damage? Sure. Didn't really change too much here. Like I said... For long-range builds, bosses are kind of a not-issue. Okay. And I think at this point, we probably want to just start pumping all of my money into making my universities have like a 20% on magic studies. I could invest in other things, but it really is shields that are the spooky. worth getting a couple of blisters just to keep things slow here. And yeah, they increase the upgrade prices from times three to times four in the update for radar upgrades. Oh yeah. That's why I'm kind of not really upgrading them. I'll let them level up. That'll pay for it. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so the robots are getting wrecked now. And we don't have to worry about the mind flayers too much. So I think we're in a comfortable position. And we're not burning a whole lot of mana, probably because we only got... Yeah, we didn't get any more of the mana bolt upgrades. Let's see. Anything else? No, I'm, I'm just kind of waiting. I'm waiting to die. Let's grab mustard gas, though. Nam namely because we've got expunge. And so mustard gas actually has some pretty useful... ...long-term effects. Because the more poison on an enemy, the more that crit just shreds them. What's your crit chance at this point? 30%. Could be better, but I don't think I'm going to be able to make the most of that. There's just so many enemies. Just gonna have to make it work. We'll just kind of slow them down. Ooh. Yeah, when these guys get hit by the uh, the bonus poison, they just stop. Is nice. See, what are the bastion looking things? They're... They're just upraised towers. Uh, you can put towers on top of them, and they do a bunch of... Uh, well, you know, it's just better. Because, like, a plus five height goes a long way. I put planes on here. What is your range? I put planes on here, but they're just a little too far out. Maybe if I gave them a little bit more. I'll just put blisters on top for the hell of it. There we go. A 
Now I'm just going to kind of relax. Because either I live past 40 or I die pretty soon. I guess the other thing I could do is just get more ballistas around here. Cause, ah, do I get some radars up here? I might as well. And the thing is, the ballistas are getting pretty expensive. So I might as well, yeah, just get as many as I can. Uh, do I want to go for the longbow upgrades? Not really. Biplanes do bleed damage, but I haven't gotten the upgrades to really make that good. Let's just go for... Do I go for a scholarship? I think it's a little late for that. Uh, sure. Longbow. Okay, this is the boss spawn point. Let's just... I don't know. Spend that there. Yeah, too bad you can't manually assign patrol and bombing rats a la Creeper World. Dude, that'd be great! Just having uh, having them just cut down this path, and then this path, and then this path, and just ignore a lot of other things. Oh, that would be nice. A priority for uh, quantity of targets hit would be so nice. I don't know. Yeah, they're definitely making it further than they used to. Oh, and there's the portal starting to spawn. They're still getting shredded pretty hard, but they're making it farther than I'm comfortable with. Didn't you clown on Creeper World 4's final mission with planes? Uh, no, I clowned on Creeper World 4's final mission specifically with, uh, with Anti-Creeper. Which was... <laughs> really funny. Uh, I definitely climbed on quite a number of missions with planes, though. Okay, another radar here? Yes. Okay. Well, we made it to 39. Yeah, made or more anti-creep than they could. It was beautiful. I should play some more uh, Creeper World at some point. Because I've been... I don't know. I love tower defense games. There's just something really chill about them. Do I want to do damaged armor? Make them suffer more for more status ticks? Yeah, let's just go more status ticks. If you ever go back to Creeper World 4, you can actually play as the creep. Yeah, I should. I don't know, we could do that this weekend, maybe. To go back to the conversation from the beginning of, I guess, this video, earlier in the stream, uh, talking about, like, Let's Plays and not Let's Plays and stuff, one of the other problems that I ran into with a very heavy series-based focus, you know, episodes one through done, is that it makes it really difficult to go back to older games that I, you know, might not have an ending. Um... Or maybe have bonus content, because, like, the series is already over and i got to focus on other things. Um, and so, like, I really want that flexibility in my life at the moment. Because I think it would, would actually be pretty fun to finally do the play as a creeper thing. Ah, uh, most shield, most armor? And fastest. Because we really got to make sure that there's no missile dudes going this far. Let's see. When are you going to stream more Dread Hunger with the Wholesome Verse? Uh, well, we, I stream with the Wholesome Verse every Wednesday, but I don't know what game we're going to be playing. Maybe more Dread Hunger? I don't know. But that that is equally kind of out of my hands, because that's the kind of game that you need. Uh, you need a full complement of players for, and if we're if we don't have enough, then we don't have a choice. Let's do most health, most armor, and most shield. Uh, let's see, vile consumption three. Oh, let's just do po poison damage. Might as well keep that stacked up. Oh, do they do every status effect now? Yes, colorful trails. And honestly, it's actually pretty good to have them applying status effects as well. Oh, because, yeah, now they have the uh, 
now they have the poison, the creeping cough. Which means their slow effect is even, even better, yeah. So in that case, we might actually want to just get tons of ballistas down. I mostly have them focus on fastest, especially with the slow. Because they're not my main damage dealers here. They're just here to prevent enemies from getting from point A to point B quickly. Ooh, has a lot of dudes. But ultimately, it's a lot of dudes that are just waiting to go down. I don't think you could do this build very easily with a dual lane setup. It'd be tough. Oh shit, I am almost dead? What the hell? Okay. Yeah, it must have been... It must have been a very early spawn from here. Oh, because this is wave 40, of course. Yeah, I'm just gonna buff this up. Because the main problem is none of these have been getting any EXP, which holds them back pretty dramatically. Wave 40 is rough. Oh yeah, wave 40 is, is the death knell for most runs. And I thought this run was doing great, but no. Yeah, the reason why I've kept this so short uh, is because these guys get cleared out before these guys even get around to here. But that obviously has some downsides. Uh, let's just grab fortification, I guess, because the rest of these are not useful to me in the slightest. Oh, I guess I might as well get this one just because. Okay, I'm just gonna spend some money upping all of these towers and making them not trash. Okay. It's looking a little better. Okay, I think we're good. I don't think we need to worry about it anymore. Hey, and thank you, Barbarian604, for the Prime sub. Welcome on in. Okay, so we've still got a couple of goons, but these guys actually do enough damage to kind of chew through them. And because we have so many university upgrades, we don't actually need to focus on shield damage as much. We just need to focus on overall damage. Ooh. Maybe I'm wrong. We will see. Yeah. These things can't defend for shit. I think we're okay, though. Yeah, the crits are also starting to kick in, which is nice. It's true. All right. I think we're golden. At this point, there's absolutely still risk just because I can get overwhelmed. But it's not as problematic as it was going to be. Okay, what about you? Some more of this. And yeah, getting that crit in would be nice. Maybe upgrade the planes more. It costs so much money upgrading a plane. But also, uh, upgrading the planes has... Like on, um, I don't know. I don't actually know if it's like strictly better or worse. Uh, let's just go vile consumption here. But yeah, they, they upped how expensive it is to upgrade a plane. So if I want to upgrade this, it's 600 gold. If I want to upgrade this, uh, it's two. Yeah, 
And so, yeah, I don't know. I don't think upgrading planes is really, really in the cards at the moment. There we go. Well, it looks like the portals are getting pummeled at least. Still gonna take a while though. Focus on shields. We're at plus 18 shield damage. That's pretty solid. Let's go back here and take a look at this. Because if I can have this b clear their entire wave, yep, looks like it, then we have nothing to worry about. We might want to get some more mana banks, though, because the one problem with all these is it does increase the costs. I mean, it looks like we're fine. It's not touching my totals that much, but still... Been watching for a while on YouTube. Find a f ah, on YouTube. Glad to finally watch you live. Yeah, welcome on in and thank you. Ooh, that's a bunch of dudes. But it's a bunch of new dudes rolling into generally the toughest part of my defense. And if none of them are the portals, then we don't have to worry as much. Because the portals were what was killing me. bunch of these up because none of them should be below level 10 let's just invest more you will not escape there we go Where's the final upgrade of mana bolts give them a slight aoe i i wish there were more just interesting perks that gave things different effects aoe bouncing shots uh piercing just in general that would be another one uh i still wish there was an upgrade that made it so fire would spread from one target to the next like when an enemy that's burning dies it explodes and sets everything else on fire or just explodes and does damage based on how much fire was left that would get really busted though forking shots oh yeah and just double shot in general cluster bombs Give me some, like, Bloon-style weird upgrades that are just kind of exciting. Do I want mana bolts? Yes, I want mana bolts. This could kill me. We'll see what happens. Let's buy some more mana banks, compulsively. There we go. You ain't touching my mana totals. Homing mortar shells. Bouncing mortar shells. So that they hit once, and then they bounce to another nearby target. Super Ballista. Oh man, if you could put like four Ballistas in a square, uh, and they'd become one bigger Ballista. Rockets on planes. Yes. Cluster. Cluster missiles. Homing missiles on planes. Uh, gosh, what, what some other ones. Mortars that drop mines ahead of enemies. Ooh! Oh, yeah, an upgrade that for the... Uh, wow, we are actually running out of mana here. Um, an upgrade that specifically makes it so that if a mortar misses, it puts a mine on the path instead. Wouldn't that be absurd? Uh, let's see. Uh, particle cannon that the shots will actually uh, bounce from one target to the next. Because one of the biggest problems with this game is that it is all math. And very little of it is just this kind of like wild upgrade where you get... you get What this game needs is more upgrades where you, you pick it up and it's just like, Whoa, that just changed everything. Because uh, yeah, if all of a sudden all of these planes had homing rockets, suddenly just the whole game changes dramatically. You know, a 10% crit chance, I'm sure the game does change, but... And maybe I'll notice it, but I'm not going to feel it, nor will it have much of a visual difference apart from things dying faster. Or, oh, what's another one? Uh, the poison sprayer leaves kind of slowing goop on the ground. Would stun upgrades be good? Yeah, maybe. Particle cannon that shoots through anything. Uh, shoots through enemies, so trying to get it to hit the last enemy in the line is most advantageous. Yeah, just stuff that really makes you do something completely different would go so far. Uh, 
Ice that makes them slip. Oh, that'd be interesting. I don't know if that'd be good. Trail of Blood. It's a little late for it, but who knows? We might get the really good thing. Something that can gum up the portal, slowing spawns. I was actually thinking something that does damage to the spawns. So, like, if if a particle cannon kills a portal, or, you know, damages a portal, you know, leaves a status effect so that... Or, you know, maybe the portal... Uh, maybe the particle cannon just hits everything inside. So, like, all missiles out of the mecha are, are damaged. Or, you know, every beholder and eyeball that pops out of the portals is d damaged prematurely. I guess I might as well get some more radars. I'll just have him focus on progress. Player controlled weapons would be interesting. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mecha allies that travel down the lanes the other way. Yup. Yeah, I was advocating for that earlier. That would be really fun. That's honestly what I originally assumed that the encampment would be. And I kind of wish that would be what it becomes. Because currently what the encampment does is like every other tower. You know, branch A does health damage. Branch B does uh, armor damage. Branch C does uh, does shield damage. I keep bumping my mic. I'm sorry about that. Um, but what if it was instead branch A summons foot soldiers around the encampments. That kind of hang out on and around your towers. Boosting them and also maybe attacking from them. Uh, and then branch B puts mines down and branch C uh, summons mecha that walk down the other direction transferring the status effects to the mini spawns yeah I mean there's there's a bunch of things oh yeah that would actually be really good but just weird upgrades that change the course of the game in a way that is way more interesting than just this does more poison damage because what it does, what works now is that the game is in a very balanced state, so you can almost mathematically f solve it based on, you know, how the lanes are handled and so on and so forth. So I saw this one, for example, and said, this is kind of this really long, awkward path, and nothing is going to be able to do... Uh, more range on the radars. They can hit the whole damn map. Uh, you know, very, very clearly... It was going to be difficult to bring any of my defenses to bear. Maybe saw blades, but with that one split, it was going to be kind of awkward. So it felt like a good time to have uh, planes specifically. Big Brain Oogie is almost dead. <laughs> I mean, not almost dead. He's halfway, but he got pummeled. Um, but so you can mathematically kind of solve so many of the... Uh, so much of this game's current design which is good but also means that like many of the runs are starting to blur together in my head which is part of the reason why I'm doing challenge runs that way each kind of has their identity uh, but it also means that I'm way less likely to pick biplanes after this run because you know I've already done a biplane run and what's going to be the difference between this biplane run and the other biplane run not to say that it's bad, and like I've certainly got my money's worth out, but once you get to the bottom of the available content, you kind of look back and you realize that uh, the lake you just swam through was a little little shallower than you thought it was. Oogie is dead. Yup, he did not get a chance. Think of Mango. I had a Mango Lassie last night. It was good. It's from a Somalian restaurant, which was actually quite tasty. I've never had Somali food before. Uh, it looks like Ballista Alley is doing a decent job of just chewing everything up that is being presented with. Uh, let's see. For a tower that gains more money on kill, but the upgrade causes to buff enemies in exchange for a much higher kill bounty. I mean, I think the easy way to do it would be to... Um, take the banditry upgrade and just apply that to a tower. You know, you straight up have like a bank tower that has all sorts of perks They give you tons of money, but also some drawbacks. Either they're very expensive or, you know, maybe one of them co coats an enemy in gold which gives them damage resistance, but makes them worth a lot more when you kill them. 
I don't know. There's a lot of different ways that you can do it, and I would love to see... Uh, I would love to see the developers go further down that line just in terms of keeping things spicy and interesting. Because I know I'm going to hit the end of my rope after a certain point and then it's just going to be like, well, that's the game. Okay, let's take a look at this. I mean, the real answer is just radars are kind of silly. Uh, let's see. Though damage over time effects were actually really strong. Like, as strong as the actual, um... As strong as the radar towers themselves. Though, I'm curious if that includes... If the damage over, t uh, damage over time bonus damage includes stuff like Expunge. I don't think so. I'd probably assume that's, that's part of the base radar damage instead. The Ballistas were no slouches. Ballistas are shockingly good. You wouldn't think they are, but they're they're very viable, which is why the single ballista or ballista only run is actually quite viable. <laughs> 